What's happening, fam? LAR movement still moving. Subscribe or die trying. You see the thumbnail. Um, shout out to Al Harrington. He was on the I Am Athlete show. They was talking about, um, you know, his his cannabis business, Viola. But something he said made me think about something. He was talking about, you know, it takes a a, a, a million. $1.5 million to basically start up a dispensary. And what happens is you get a lot of people who are, who are celebrities, you know, and they become the face of, 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 of a strain of marijuana or they become a face of a dispensary, but they're not really in on the business. And then you got these other guys who may have... Um, who apply for, for license, you know, because um, they may have been incarcerated for marijuana or they take priority because they're, they they make less money so that they need, like, certain exemptions to get the, the clearance for a license. But this is where the minority business thing kicks in, where somebody, you know, you can get the license, but you don't have the funding. You don't have the $1.5 million to start it. But... And you don't really have the the act the, the the IQ to run a business, not the IQ, but you you don't have the experience to run a business. So, somebody comes in and gives you the money. They get the license. You get the minority business people of color type tag. Um, they charge you up the up the wazoo fees, and you really make little to no money. Three years go by. And they can buy the license off you or from you or push you out of the company because you were just a face and you were a, a minority business face to fill a quota, you know, and now that that's done, you know, get up out of here and you, you probably leave with little to no money. And then, but after that, he said something about, you know, you're supposed to um, help the community. And I thought about it, like, and as far as help the community, help, help, um, beautify it. Up, you know, if, if you're gonna be a dispensary in an area, you gotta chip in and make sure the community looks better and runs better. Since you're in the community, since you're a business running in the community, and I thought about that, and I said, you know what? That could be a way that people are using marijuana to gentrify the community. You see, you get a black face to your company or people of color face to your company. You put it in the neighborhood. You know, it's legalized, it's monetized. Now people are, you know, people who, who are weed smokers, they don't think about it, they, but they're just trying to get high. You know, all the, you know, all the medical benefits, uh, most people don't care about none of that. So they're just trying to get high, bang, dispensaries, trap house, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. People are buying it. People are buying it. People are making money. And then all of a sudden, you know, you can't afford to stay here. You know, the prices start going up. You know, dispensaries there catering to a, demo, catering to a different demographic. You know, there's less and less crime. The property value goes up. Because we has less violence in that game than say harder drugs, uh, you know, you know, cocaine, heroin, methamphetamines, you know, fentanyl. Those are more uh, a violent, aggressive drug trades. So, you know, and he was, he was saying that like eighty five percent of all uh, offenses. Or cannabis related, or eighty five percent of all drug offenses were, were, were cannabis related. So you're gonna get less and less crime. But the thing about it is, these people can't afford to be in the neighborhoods. They can just afford to get high. And I thought about that. I was like, man, you're gonna fund your, you know, some of our people are gonna fund our own gentrification. In theory, if this goes down the way I'm thinking. Um, you're gonna fund your own gentrification for getting high. Because as long as you're getting high, you're not really doing that much. You know, you're not really planning, you're not really um, 
productive member of society, you're just getting high you know, for most people. And as the prices go up, you know, housing prices go up and it's less and less and less affordable, all you can afford to do is, you know, get high. And they fix the neighborhood. And if it was a black person, face of it, you was comfortable because, oh, look at look how we doing it. We coming up. It's a black face. It's a black company. People of color. Not three years go by. The person disappears. It's not a black company no more. But it wasn't never a black company. It was just a black face. You didn't know that. Now you've been investing heavily into this business. The person who was the face didn't, didn't really get a payout. They really have nowhere else to... It really... Um, don't have anything to show for it. So they got played also. And now, you know, kind of renovate the dispensary, change it, a little bit of area. They may buy some real estate with some of the money, this, that, and the third. And because ultimately he was talking about, we don't study business. We let, we'll let somebody else just do something, you know, and, and, and rather cut us a check than actually get our hands dirty and learn learn the business from the ground up. And because of that laziness, we wind up being caught up. So, in my opinion, yeah, it's, it's going to get bad, real bad, you know. And people are not going to see it because the people that are predominantly going to going to help this out are going to be high as a kite. They're not going to care. They, it, it, they, when they get old and sober up, then they're going to go, I didn't know. Uh, oh, they, they gentrified us with weed. Like, they're going to blame the white man, but you was too busy rolling up. Like, chill out. You don't even see it coming. But tell me what you think. Like, share, subscribe, or die. Try and peace.